In this episode, good mate Nick and I join forces in pursuit of one of the prettiest, yet hardest fighting and elusive fish to ever prowl the murky depths of a bustling urban river. We battle unfavourable weather, busy port traffic and strong tides all in search of a fish they call Fred. <laughs> Have a go there. Our trip begins in the pre-dawn glow of a humid summer's morning, launching the boat, rigging the gear and chatting tactics as we make the run out to the shipping terminals. Even though it's still early, the river is a hive of activity, with trawlers, tugboats and cargo ships already getting stuck into their day. Like most threadfin salmon trips, the day starts by sanding the huge expanse of shipping terminals that line the river mouth. Finding the fish can take minutes or hours, all depending on the day. Once you do find some though, the hard part really begins. Threadfin are notorious for having lockjaw and simply refusing to bite, no matter how long your jigger vibe in their face. If they don't bite, there's not much else you can do but head somewhere else and start the search again for the next school. Then, hopefully, when you do stumble across them, they'll be finally feeling hungry. We just hoped we'd be able to find some active fish before those ominous looking clouds came to visit. There he is. Bite? Yep. Stolen. <laughs> I up a couple there on the active target, mate. Oh, I know. Well, G'day, ladies and gents, and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. We're out in the mighty Brisbane River today, here with... Whoa! He's a good fish, Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> here with Nick White from Tech Fishing. We've been at this for a couple of hours now, chasing the mighty threadfin salmon. And as you may well know with salmon, it's one of those things. You can spend hours searching when you find it finally put it all together it can be game on and we've got a little hook up oh whitey ready? not really but i'm still getting excited good, i haven't caught a thready in a long time oh he's got the release weight yeah, good we'll man try and look after this fish excellent net ready look at you go it's like you've done this before oh, once or twice <laughs> just a couple up yeah, no, these fish, they suffer a bit of barotrauma, so you want to try and look after them. You do, they do. Now, you see, fishing along the wharves here, we've got just about every bit of Lowrance technology at our disposal today, and it's so far paid off. I think he's going to be just up here in a second here. Oh, that's him. That's him, the big gold Watch nugget. Watch it, Lee. The big gold nugget. Golden boy. Oh, do it for us, Whitey. Do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> we got that. Yes! Well done, mate. Oh, how good is that? Right on now. Whitey did say these fish are quite fragile, so while you're getting everything ready, keep them in the water, keep them wet, and try and be as swift about it as you can be. Alright, you ready mate? Oh I'm not ready, but we can be. Just He's actually not a bad little fish. Grab his tail. Grab his tail. Yeah. Try and keep his fins in good Nick. Watch that, it's in the carpet. Oh good. Hang on. That's oh, him, that's him, that's him. Out. Come up here with us, Whitey. You're the star of the show, you found these fish. But that what you said spot lock. Spot lock of course. That is what we're chasing, the mighty threadfin salmon. The mighty Brisbane River threadfin salmon at that. They are a beautiful golden colour, mate. Nice fish, mate. What do you reckon? You can give us the old visual oh, measurement. I reckon he's going to go a uh, metre. I reckon he'd be 95, mate. 95? Cracking fish. I'm happy with that. Chuck him quickly on there. We'll get that fish trap out so we can... And I'll show you a bit what we're using in a second here. Time of the essence sort of thing. Now we're trying right. to get this guy back as quickly as possible. They are good eating. If you are going to keep one for a feed, that's fine. But if you are going to let them go, try and do the right thing. Whitey's got that release weight there. What it is, just a big snapper lead. Takes them back down to the bottom. And then, uh, yeah, pre repressurizes them. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to go. Yep. And send it back down. See you, mate. Thank you. There. There's that fish coming back down to the bottom. Oh, I'm in the shadow. Oh, we just lost him there. Just pulled the. There's the, the there's the release weight. Just hit the X, Sammy. And the release weight's coming back up. Job done, mate. Job done. Now we've got to get some more. 
Right, uh, because time is always of the essence when you've got a fish on the deck, I'll, I'll run through a bit of the gear quickly, quickly now while Whitey's trying to find that school again. Just fishing 95 mil fish traps. Now these are very much a staple in this style of fishing. Vertical, up and down, vibration bait. They just absolutely love them and you can keep them in the strike zone for so long. Really just dance it in their face until they eat it. It's exactly what we just did there. We've been on that school for probably 10 minutes, maybe more, and uh, finally managed to get a bite. In this dirty water like the Brisbane River, I don't reckon the colour really makes a big difference, but hey, pick one that you like and feel comfortable with and go from there. And then the gear, you don't want to go too light because there is a, uh, a gnarly shark problem like there is everywhere else in southeast Queensland slash Australia, but uh, this is a 6 to 20 blade and tails rod. It's got plenty of balls. You can really get stuck into them if you need to. Um, running 15 pound braid and a 3000 ATC vigilance, you can... Uh, you can turn up the heat with a little outfit like this uh, if you need to. Obviously, let them run, have their head, but uh, when it's time to bring them in, get stuck into them, get them to the boat nice and healthy and get them back if you're not keeping them for a feed. How are we looking, Whitey? Any more there? Uh, she's slowed up a bit, mate. Oh, I scared them off. We've got to re them now. That's half the battle. Couple through here. Couple of big boy Freddies. Big boy. That's all your mates. See, this is where you do all right in a live bait. These fish should be cruising up and down, wouldn't they? Yeah, well, they're both feet. There'd be another fish there. There's probably a couple here. Yeah, there's two more there. Three more. I'd love to say we got straight back into the action, but. The only other bite we got was from a very overzealous tailor that took a liking to my vibe. After that, the heavens opened up and down came the rain. A quick check of the radar confirmed it wasn't just a passing shower and the tough call was made to head in. We'd have to come back another day. That day just happened to pop up sooner rather than later and just 48 hours since the first trip, we were back on the mighty Brisbane River fishing some much more favourable conditions. Last trip was a couple of days ago. We got rained on. The fish completely shut off and you know what, we called it a day. We called it a day, but we are back for vengeance. Whitey, oh, to be honest, I was happy with one. My thready career is, uh, is very limited. One thready for me is about as good as it gets. I reckon I average one every about 10 trips, unless I'm with Whitey. So I was stoked. Whitey, not so much. He said we can do a heap better than that. So we're back here today to... Uh, to get vengeance on those ones that we missed, mate. Let's hope, mate. We can't do much worse. No. New day, new us. Let's get out. As luck would have it, right from the word go, we were finding fish. But, as often is the case for the old Freds, just because you can find them doesn't necessarily mean you're going to catch them. Here we go, under the boat. What's that your lure there in his face? Look at the fork in his tail. Have you had, how many times have you had that, like, work? Like that? Yeah. And I had one the other day that I'll go, oh, there's a fish that will fishing in, like, on an edge. And, um, like, I saw one come up, like, on the other side of the boat. So, like, I was up, I just turned around, watched my lure just sink down, and it got, like, a metre above his head, and it just goes, okay. oh, I'm on. Do that today. I'm just trying to, yeah. My lure. Get in. Get yeah, just in the set. I'm have a head on. Actually, two coming from the left, one coming from the right. Oh, they're coming. Oh, they're coming. No! So guys, that's Whitey's lure. Two fish there. I just feel bad that they're swimming past the all the way to get to mine. That's crazy, you can even see the force in the tail. Yeah, that's not cool when it's happening. And then there's another one that's just swimming around. Yeah, that's not cool. Whitey, mate, this is 
the new age of fishing. We're looking at these fish in real time. Got the old Lorance after Tug 2 going on. Give us, give us the elevator pitch, because this is wild. I know we've, we've used this previously in other episodes, but mate, we're literally watching these fish and getting our lure exactly right in the right spot. Doesn't mean they'll eat it, but we're getting the lures in the right spot at least. I'm glad we've seen that, because um, just one just behind the boat there. We just had fish swimming past our lures pretty much with having the lure on their nose and not eating it. So you, know, you see a lot of stuff where people say it's like cheating. It shouldn't be allowed in tournaments or whatever, but you still can't make it. Alright, they're all dropping down. Yeah, there's a fish right here. Game on. Well, that's, that's the thing I think you know you do have to realise you can have all the technology you want in the world unless you're going to drop a net on their head you can't make them over there but open their mouth yeah I, and look I think the biggest thing is it um, it gives you confidence to know there's fish in the area as you've seen just moving the boat and positioning the boat to get the lures in front of them like it's it's definitely a tool that's going to help um, you know put fish in the boat I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with it, like it's a very time-consuming tool. Yep. But um, yeah, some of the stuff you learn from it. A lot of the time, it's it's more the fish you don't catch that teach you more than the fish that you do. So if the fish are just swimming past your presentation and not taking any notice, then no like, point using the same thing. Yeah, might, might be time to change it up. Yeah. So if you can get something and see how the fish are actually reacting to them at times, you'll see that. If you fish too fast, you'll actually spook fish and they'll take off. So, you know, it's taught me a lot about fishing a lot slower. Um, yeah, and just really try and keep that lure in their face. So, yeah, you know, as you've seen me do a couple of times this morning, if there's a fish up higher, lift the lure up and put it in front of its face. Yeah, know, so. and I've noticed where previously I've always been big miss you getting it in their face and almost just shaking it. Yeah. A bit of shake and bake action. You don't have to do too much, but put a couple of stuff in here. Yeah. So, guys, that's two fish cruising over here and stand by, why did you put it the side? Oh, I did, I've... There's um, my lure and there's your lure just behind me, so... If we can convert... That's the inner set. This is going to be all time. You can see they're up a little bit higher, those fish. All from the bite. It certainly it helps you to keep focus, doesn't it? Like oh, yeah. when you've got a fish on, it's it's there's no none of that period where you go, oh, you know, you just get into the uh, the kind of the, yeah, the rhythm. It really helps you to. And there's fish there, you're fishing effectively. got no problems finding the fish Sammy. We've um, you can see on side scan here we've got all these fish here. All those little white dots are all fish. You got the shadows behind them. We'll get the active target in there. You can start seeing all those fish stacked up. The problem we have is that is the keel of a ship and we're not allowed to fish in there. So we're finding all these fish but now we can't target them. But yeah, pretty cool to see that many fish stacked up. We've found them under two or three boats already. Uh, you can count one, two, three, four. They're about five or six fish across there. And then they're going off the screen. They're about three fish deep. They're all going to be meter plus fish. So yeah, unfortunately, we can't get a lure to them. So that's where we're at at the moment. We're going to keep searching around, see if we can find some that are out in the open. Hopefully that turn of the tide, they might sort of come out a little bit. We've got a fair bit of run at the moment, so they're sort of in those little pockets out of the run. But yeah. If that doesn't work, we're probably going to wrap it up here pretty soon, and uh, we're going to go straight down the road to Wilson, <laughs> uh, have a chat with the guys there in the R&D department, see if we can get a fish trap with a little motor on it, just a little propeller at the back, a little rope remote control that we can just drive in from a safe distance under the boats and really target those fish. If only. <laughs> if only. That's uh, That'd be nice. Turns out Whitey was dead on the money and as soon as the tide started to slow the fish started to venture out from the structure giving us a way better chance of getting our lures in front of them. There's a hook up. Finally sir. <laughs> Good fish too mate. I'll get that net ready. <laughs> Oh, 
Taking a bit of line, Sammy. Mate, he is riding away there. I'm um, a bit undergunned on the little 100 ATC here, Combat 100. I've only got 15 pound line. Not that they stitch you up, but still, solid fish. Yeah, he feels alright. Mate, we've had to work pretty hard for that. Well, two days in the making. Getting a little bit closer, there's leader Sam, he's a nice fish. Oh, he's got that down deep too. Get that net mate, we've only got a 25 pound leader. Oh good. Oh, oh whitey, whitey. Finally. That is, that is what we came for mate. Finally. Oh, I'll pass that over to you. Finally. Alright, get him on the deck. Yeah. We worked really hard for this guy this morning. That's um, yeah, probably the best part of three hours work. Been finding heaps of fish, but just can't get to them. So found a couple little stray ones out, out in a bit wider, and yeah, we sat on them and just worked a couple little fish, got a couple little shows, and finally got the nib, Sammy. Finally got it. Righto, we're going to let this guy go, so we've got that release weight, just going to, this guy's got pretty hard blowing guts from that barra trauma, so we'll sink him back down to depth. Yeah. Is he going? Yeah. Turn that active target. Just got the thing out then. Oh, right, there he is. There he is. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> Whitey. Wow. <Well, laughs> didn't we work hard for that one? We have. Two, well, day and a half. Day and a half. Two half days. Yeah, well, if we didn't get rain interrupted, we probably could have toughed out that other one a little bit longer, yeah. but, but it's a lovely day today. We've done our, done our background checks on all the spots, yeah, came back. Yeah, some yards and finally found a couple that we could actually target. Actually, I should clarify that. When I say we, I'm very much a passenger. This is pretty much a charter. Whitey's he's on the electronics, he's looking down. He's like, Sammy, drop there, drop there. So I, I accept no, no, accolades or anything from these trips it's just all whitey and i just happen to hold the rod that gets bit sometimes but mate <laughs> meter plus fish too that was a cracker yeah explain the release weight because if you guys are going to come out chasing threadies make sure you have one of these obviously feel free to keep one for a feed they're very good eating they're definitely a great table fish but if you want to release them whitey yeah so basically we just got a, a snapper lead or use a big a big weight this is a just a bit of stainless um, wire stainless wire that's sharp and you can put it through their bottom bottom lip and then sink them back down to depth. So as you bring them up from that deep water, the gas is expanding yep. their, their air bladder. Um, obviously, you don't want to go piercing that, and you know a lot of people do that side of things. But imagine if I stabbed you in the lung, semi. I don't yeah. think it'd be too happy. Well, it opens up to infection and all sorts of 100%. stuff. So yeah. So using a release weight is the best way to get them back to the bottom. Obviously, the, the water pressure will then condense those gases, and yep. yeah, he's got a lot be better chance of survival. So ah, cool. Um, yeah, guys, make sure you've got one of them on the boat if you're, you're well, out targeting these. Close fish. look. So that's it there. It's obviously barbless so once it goes to the bottom yep. you just, just pull it back out and obviously out. the angle of it it just comes straight back out of their mouth yeah mate Easy. oh one more one more I'll I'll try and do it again i'm stoked that was awesome we worked for that fish i love fish that you have to work for that was a that was a mission we got it done okay. and then as if to prove it wasn't a fluke whitey hooked up again the very next drift yep. oh whitey yes yes Sammy. yes we just had to wait for that tide you did you did Another nice fish here. <laughs> Mate, what's that about five minutes after? Well, even five. less than five. Alright, net time. Yeah, we'll get ready. That um, release weight as well. I'm playing up as much. Oh, that's because he's not a big one. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, a, it's a power tail. Oh, what? Oh, Nick, what? Dangling. Expertise. He didn't even want to eat my lure, but I caught him because I'm a really good angler. I wish that didn't happen, Sam. The greatest thing here is I've been mates with 
whitey for a long time. Some would say long enough to not even cut in that first fish, put my fish in and just <laughs> this catfish and call it a video. Oh no. <laughs> Called the hook up. Yes I sir. Why he wasn't pulling drag. Good weight, no fight. And tried to do some cobia things and came straight to the surface. I'd love to show you the full unhooking process, but this will be the end of the uh, catfish content for this video. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like all the fish species were having a chew, even the undesirable ones. With a bit of luck, we could convince one more Fred to bite before that tide started to run again. Oh, I got one! <laughs> We've got a hook up here, guys. Oh, I need catfish. I don't think so. Well, on to another one here. Feels like a really solid fish, actually. Took some nice line. Oh, look at him go. This excites me, Whitey. Yeah, it's great. Had a bit of a run. Looks pretty big. Hey, well, he's, does he feel pretty big, Sam? <laughs> he feels very big. He's just run straight back towards where we don't want him to go, which is that big boat. Oh. I think we go after him, why do you? Through the marlin, marlin chase. This is exciting. This is exciting, it's all just switched on. Mate, that side started slow and the fish have decided to chew. Those fish are all sort of tucked up before, they're all sort of coming out and feeding a bit now. Look at him go! He's having a crack. He might have got the dog. Maybe. How big do these caddies get? Starting to come up now. Whitey, this has got to be one of the harder fighting threads I've hooked. He's having a proper go, this one. He's had a couple of good runs there at the start, but I think there's a bit of colour there, is it? Come on, reveal yourself, please. Yeah, you're having a couple of. There it is. Yeah. Oh, it's a big thread. Real big thread. Come on, mate. It's about the same size as mine. Yeah, but I'm nice as long to get in. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Well done, mate. Yes, Whitey. That's a cracker. Oh, I'm stoked. Look at that guy's tail, Sammy. That's the biggest thread I've caught in a long, long yep. time. There we go. Fish trap in the corner of the mouth. Perfect hook up. He did straight a little hook up there. Grab that out. Supplies there if you want them, mate. Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, that came out probably too easy. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'll get rid of that net. Have a go at that. What a gold nugget. Rash and thready. That's uh, the biggest thready I've caught in a long, long time. I'm absolutely stoked. I'm not even sure if it's all in the frame. It's a, that is a belter. Yeah, he's gonna be up there around that meter, meter five mark. Big hit on him. God, I guys. Trying to get this guy back. Chuck that release weight in. That's it. That's him there. He's that's putting. So just through that bit there. Oh, unreal, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And send him down. Yes. Well done, Samuel. Yes. Well, that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Like I said before guys, none of this is my angling skill. I'm just doing this with a rod. This is all Whitey. Now Whitey actually does this for a business. He comes on your boat and teaches you how to use your marine electronics. Lawrence, Simrad, Garmin, whatever you've got, Whitey is an absolute guru. He can teach you how to catch more fish and use your time on the water way, way more efficiently. Give Whitey a call. All his details will be, well, he'll put his number here on the bottom of the video and also whole details of his website and everything will be in the description of this video. But guys, if you get out every so often, you're a bit of a weekend warrior, you don't get to fish as much as you like to, 
make sure when you're out there you are doing everything right got all your electronics dialed in and Whitey is the man to teach you how to do it thank you Whitey no worries mate that was sick well ladies and gentlemen that is it we had a, had a bit of a sand around, they, they've gone. Yeah, we're getting an early mark today, mate. That is, that's all right. Nothing wrong with a, an early mark when you spent two days doing it, so. Yeah. Nick White, a massive thank you. No worries, mate. That was unreal. I haven't caught a thready that big in, um, or a long time, actually. A really long time, I don't know. I can't even remember, which is a bad thing, but you catch a lot more than me, so it's nice to learn from the best. Good couple of mornings on the water, so, well, bit of banner. Got a, a couple bit. of fish to top it off, and are we gonna... stoked with that catfish? But... Well, I was gonna say, fish of the trip, that caddy, yep. absolute horse. Nailed me. <laughs> Put up a good tussle. We're gonna wrap it up on the water for a change. We've got no fish to fill it. We released all our fish today, which is awesome, and that first trip. So, once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you follow Nick on all his social media accounts, and if you need some sound to help, look him up. He will change your game. I can guarantee you that much. Whitey, thanks again for taking us out. No worries, mate. Always good to get spoon-fed by Whitey and throw a bit of chat around. Guys, remember, if you'd like to support the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also, if you want some merch, check it all out at sammyhitskyfishing.com. For a full description on all the gear used, you can find that in the description of this video. But for now, guys, stay safe. Hope you're catching a few fish. And we'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. Cheers. This will be the end of the uh, catfish content for this video. Ha, 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 ha.